Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Well, I'll tell you one thing that Game Night gets right, and that would be its marketing campaign. If you've seen the trailers or the posters, and if you haven't, don't worry, because the same is true of the studio logos and opening title sequence, you see a lot of imagery like this. A variety of game pieces and other game-related imagery thrown together and just sort of flying around. And this is how that nails the feeling of this movie. None of the pieces are from the same game. These elements are all fun on their own, but throwing them all together causes maybe a little too much chaos. Which is a shame, because there are some very good pieces here. And the best thing that you can say for a comedy is, of course, I did laugh quite a bit at this mashup of so date night and horrible bosses, kinda. There's some shades of that old Ethan Hawke movie mystery date in there, and a premise lifted straight from the Bill Murray vehicle, The Man Who Knew Too Little. Although this one is certainly miles better than that flop. This film, like that one, concerns regular people getting caught up in a real life or death crime caper, which they think is all fake. At the center of the story are Jason Bateman and Rachel McAdams as the most competitive people in the world, who are in a relationship with each other and host a weekly game night for their friends. The attendees of this game night fall into three groups. There are two high school sweethearts, there's a serial womanizer and his flavor of the week date, and a new addition to the group, Bateman's overachieving big brother, played by Kyle Chandler. Each one of these groups has one simple sitcom-style plot to work out between them, our main couple is trying to conceive a child, and so they're dealing with the stress of all that. The high school sweethearts are dealing with the revelation of a long-held secret. And the womanizer may or may not have met his match with his latest game night date. That leaves the older brother, who takes it upon himself to outdo his super competitive younger brother, as brothers tend to do, by hosting the latest game night at his lavish home. But this won't be any old game night, because he's hired a company to stage an elaborate role-playing mystery adventure game that the rest of the group will have to solve. When kidnappers break in and steal the older brother for real, now that's not a spoiler because it is in the trailer, everyone just assumes their fake roles and jumps into trying to solve the very real crime, and well, now we got ourselves a movie. I'm going to start with what works. Now, I said that each couple has one plot line, and that is true. But the thing is that all of them actually kind of work in a sort of sitcom-y way. And the movie ends up adding up to a little bit more than the sum of these very sitcom-y little parts. Now, all of these plot lines do eventually get old, the first of which is the sweethearts who literally stretch the same argument throughout the entire running time of the film. The people who fare the best are Bateman and McAdams. I did love their relationship because although they're hyper-competitive, it's not with each other. They're a team through and through, and they really go for it in their attempts to crush the competition. McAdams in particular is a real standout, and I kind of fell in love with her a little bit in this movie, which is not a hard thing to do, I mean... She's Rachel McAdams, after all, but I tell you, I've sort of forgotten over the years, with all of her dramatic work, that she actually became a star due to her work in comedies. And she is very, very funny here. Stop! Wait, wait, I have kids at home. Now with an ass like that, you don't. Oh. Well, thank you. King Knight is also surprisingly well shot for a sitcom-y little comedy. There are some inventive camera segues and shot choices that really class up the joint considerably. And one really zany sequence where the camera follows a bunch of characters playing hot potato with one particular important plot device that I found a welcome bit of showmanship inserted into all of this silliness. And that silliness is what ultimately collapses this movie near the end. To say that Game Night strains credulity is actually being sort of generous. There are things that take place in this movie that are simply impossible, even in a comedy. You want an example? The group at one point has to go and steal a thing from a rich criminal's house during a party. Not only does the group waltz right past security, through the front door, and into the party itself, but they notice from across the room that someone has opened the safe, left the door open, and turned their back completely. This would never happen. The movie is filled with moments like that. Moments where you just say, ah, come on! Not to mention double and triple crosses and reverses, where one character gives a big speech where he explains that the proceeding was all just a ruse and part of his grand master plan, and then another character will step up and say, well, actually, I knew all about your master plan, and I've been running my own ruse concurrently with yours, and yada, yada, yada. There are so many of these that the movie even comments on it at one point, which, of course, elicits more laughs, but only after I started throwing things at the screen and yelling, ah, come on! 
Now, as much as I started to rebel against this movie near the end, as much as this film can be a bit too much with its preposterous plot, it does manage to get enough right for a long enough time that ultimately I can recommend it as a pretty good time at the movies. I had enough laughs and enough admiration for the visual artistry throughout, and especially the winning performance by Rachel McAdams, that Game Night manages to squeak out a medium bag of popcorn for me. If you and your main squeeze are having movie night, well, I guess you could do a lot worse than to check out Game Night. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us, please, by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Game Night in the comments as well. Let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and that is my final answer. <laughs>